Hey everybody, it's great to see you today. Today is March 15th, and this is Living Power, your online Bible study where we are walking through the Bible in a year. Today we are reading from the book of Deuteronomy, and we have a very special word from the Lord today. What does God require of us? That's what we're going to talk about today, and what that means and how it can even be possible, our fulfillment of it. I want to welcome you to the class today and to tell you that if you are just now joining us, welcome. It is wonderful to have you with us. If you are just now finding us and maybe you are watching the videos or trying to watch some back videos, I want to encourage you to do that and just encourage you to take your time. Try not to rush through just to finish the Bible study, but to really take your time and follow the Holy Spirit's leading because He will direct you to catch up and watch certain lessons on certain days so that you can be real receptive to hear what it is that He wants you to hear and to see what He wants you to see. So I just want to encourage you, if you're just now finding us, that um, that's a great way to kind of get caught up. You don't have to go back to the beginning if you're just now finding us. You can just jump in where we are and then take a you know deep dive into where we are and just go forward with us from there. So that's perfectly fine. Today we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 10 and there's a call to love and obedience that is just beautiful that I want to point out to you today. And I want to um, I want to talk about stubbornness for just a minute. The title of the lesson today is that there is an operation that cures stubbornness. We're going to talk about what that operation is today. And I'm kind of reminded of a time in my life when I was very stubborn. There have been many, many times, but one time in particular, it was about two years ago, I went to the basement. I was bound and determined to clean up the unfinished portion of our basement where we have a lot of storage. And it was just filled with things. There were too many things in there. I was tired of it and it was not a day when my husband could join me in helping me. So he said, you know, you really should wait to go down there until I can help you with some of that. And I said, no, no, I'm going to get it done. I want to get it done today. Well, he was right and there was a piece of glass down there that uh, needed to be moved and it was really too heavy for me. And I ended up cutting my arm, I kind of fell right into the edge of it and it was a sharp edge and it kind of went into my arm and I ended up having to go to the emergency room for stitches. So my mom went with me, she drove me and you know that was kind of because I was stubborn that day and lo and behold the room didn't get cleaned up, I had to stop what I was doing and that was it. So it would have been much faster and easier if I had just waited until he was available because he was certainly willing to help me. That's just an example, one small example of how I sometimes uh, get stubborn and I wonder if you can think of an example too of sometimes when you are stubborn in your own life. So let's see what the Word has to say to us today about that. I want us to start with Deuteronomy 10, verse 12 and 13. Let's just look at this passage together in the Bible, and let's see if it will answer the question for us, this most important question that we ask ourselves, what does God require of us? Let's see what it says. So I'm on page 294. If you're on the Kindle, you'll want to go to Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. Here it goes. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases Him. Love Him and serve Him with all your heart and soul. And you must always obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. I love that part at the end, for your own good. It's not because God's a meanie and He likes to Lord rules over our life. But he gives us these commands for our own good. I just love that. So, three things. What does God require? To love, serve, and obey him. Basically, in a nutshell, that's it. I wonder how life would be different for ourselves and for the world if Christians woke up in the morning 
And the first thing that they ask themselves in the morning is, how can I love God today? How can I serve him today? And how can I obey God today? Hmm, I wonder how things would be different. We ask ourselves, well, how can we love God more? How can we serve him more? And I wanted to remind you of the passage in the New Testament in Matthew 25, verse 40, where Jesus said, if you do anything for the least of these, the poor in your community, the people who are hungry, thirsty, without clothes, without shelter, people in prison, the poor and the needy, if you do things for them, it's just like you're doing those things for me. That is how he wants us to serve him. One of the many ways, but a very valid way, is that we can love God as we show love to other people. Now, in this passage today, it sort of gives us, it gives us a cure. It tells us how we can actually do these things. How do we do this? Let's jump down to verse 16 because here is the clue to how we can get to the point where we can love, serve, and obey God. It says, therefore, whenever a passage starts with the word therefore, take note because it means this is how you do it. Therefore, change your hearts and stop being stubborn. Now there's a little asterisk in the Bible here after change your heart. So we need to look down to the bottom of the page and see what it says. It says in Hebrew, that word change your hearts means to circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Now there are other places in the Bible that I want to show you today that can teach us how we do that. Do we do that? Does God do that? What is involved in that? And I'd like to share with you that today. Changing our hearts really means to circumcise our hearts so that we can stop being stubborn. So evidently, stubbornness is going to get in the way of our being able to love, obey, and serve God. And our stubbornness is something that God wants us to remove from our life because it is a deterrent. It is an obstacle. So I want us to think about something too today that I have been very, very convicted with over the last week. And as I've been preparing the lesson for today, I really feel like God wants me to share this with you. You know, we all want to know what is it that it requires for us to be saved. And as Christians, we believe that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the way to salvation. It is through faith alone that we are saved. However, we can't get past all of these scriptures and even the passage today that says, love, serve, and obey. You know, how many times in the Bible does it say, obey the word of the Lord? Not only in the Old Testament, but it is all over the New Testament, this co command to obey the Lord. And so over this year, we're really going to be studying and looking at what does it mean to obey? Because when we encounter the living God and when we read the Bible, we're supposed to be changed and we're supposed to walk away from God, a different person. So faith is step number one. And if you have not completely given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, I would invite you to not waste another minute. Don't wait another minute longer and really invite him into your heart today. Let him become, from this moment forward, the Lord of your life. Now, if you've already done that or if you want to take that step today, that's wonderful. The next step, though, there is another step. It doesn't, our walk with the Lord does not end there, for that is just the beginning. Step number two requires us to submit, and it requires us to let our guard down and let Jesus come into our heart and be Lord of our life. From that point forward to the rest of our life, all of the days that we are here on earth, we are called to submit to God's will. And that is a lifelong process, but it's also a daily process of submitting and giving our hearts to him. Surrender versus control is what we face every single day. And that is how 
we can honor the Lord, that is what he requires, is daily submission. In Jeremiah 4, 4, it says, people, surrender your pride, surrender your control and your desire for power. Change your hearts before the Lord. There it is again. Change your hearts. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, we see it says, God will circumcise your heart so you can love him with your whole heart. So here we see it's something, this circumcision of our heart is something that God will do. But we have to cooperate with him. We have to, in our surrendering, allow him in <clears throat> to circumcise the foreskin of our hearts because it is through that process that we undergo that operation that removes the stubbornness from our lives so that we can more and more and more submit our will to Him. Colossians 2 verse 11, let me give you one more. <clears throat> we are circumcised when we came to Christ, but not by a physical process. He performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of our sinful nature. Christ does it, and we cooperate with Him. What is the heart exactly? Well, the heart is our will. It's the seat of our emotions. It's our inner man. It's our intentions, our purposes. It's how we discern between good and evil. And in Romans, it says the source, it's the source of our moral awareness. Oh, the heart, our inner man, it is so important because God not only looks at our actions, but he looks at our heart. He wants to know. He looks at our inner motives to see what is our motive driving that action. Is our motive pure? This command to obey today is for you and it's for me. You must love the Lord your God and obey all his requirements, decrees, regulations, and commands. And the only way that we can get to that place where we are able to do that is if we allow for this operation to take place in our hearts to get rid of our stubbornness. Now, there were things in the reading today that the people were to watch out for. They were to watch out in the world and the, the custom around them not to fall into the trap of falling into the trap of, of following the customs of the world. We can easily get assimilated into the culture around us. And when you're in school, when you're in work, when you're at home, in your comings and goings, we need to ask the Lord to make us more aware of the idols that are around us and the trappings in the culture around us. In Deuteronomy 12, verse 30, it says, Do not even ask the people when you go into the land, O Israelites, about their customs and worship, for they perform detestable acts that I hate. And surely there are things in our, cust our culture, too, that the Lord hates that we are not to get involved in involved with. We must be so careful to live our life holy and separate from the ways of the world and the things that the world pulls us into. There's also a new command today that I wanted you to see. In Deuteronomy 12, 5, the Lord says, you, O Israelites, will now worship in a new place where I tell you. This is probably one of the most important things of your reading today. God is about to establish one city in one tribe. I'm not going to tell you where. I'm going to leave you in suspense. Where he wants his people to worship from all over the land of Israel. And one of the things that he's doing is he is saying, I want you to live different from the people around you. You see, you're going to see in the Bible Baal, B-A-A-L, a lot. And it looks like that's a particular god, but actually Baal is a group of gods. It actually means Lord or Master. And the people that lived in the land that the Israelites are about to, to go into and take over, they had a Baal for this hill, they had a Baal for this hill, this valley, this place. They believed that different gods 
Uh, we're responsible for the um, fertility of that place and the blessing in that particular place. So people would just squat down on a hill and worship this Baal, or they would just squat down over here and worship the Baal that was believed to be in control of that particular place, that particular valley. There were high places everywhere, spots on tops of hills or trees that people would worship. God was saying, I do not want you to worship in that way. Do not worship as the people in this land do. Don't just worship anywhere, but you worship Israel where I tell you. What's happening? He is changing their pattern of worship. He says, all of you are doing as you please. I'm sure you read that in the reading. You're worshiping like the heathen peoples on whatever hill and wherever you want. The call to worship today is clear. We are not to worship the Lord as we want to, not to serve, not to obey Him just as we want to, but we are called to love and serve and obey the Lord as He has command has commanded us. Because you see, God is the God of the whole earth, not just a local deity. He is not just God of one hill, and He is not just God of our Sundays, but he should be the God of each day of our week. Let's not fall into the trap of following the customs of the people around us, but let's let's study and seek to learn how we can love, serve, and obey the Lord as he wants us to. Well, I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you today. It has been my blessing and privilege to be able to Bible study with you. Shalom until we meet again tomorrow. Blessings. Blessings.